Welcome to Follow the Action. This is one time John Layfield, and that is for Joy Delicious, who's out there right now in our Zoom set getting ready to fire. This is Follow the Action, as I just said. If you follow this podcast, this is the fastest growing podcast in the freaking universe. Over 50 countries have downloaded it, all 50 states. And if you watched last Saturday on our live Twitch, you better have a Brinks truck because we gave out so many freaking winners in our UFC, and that was all thanks to this man. They call him Joy Delicious. At least they do at Liberty University when there's a rumor <laughs> that he's involved in the Jerry Falwell pull boy scandal. We don't know that for sure. We don't ask questions. We don't tell. He is our Joey Odessa. Joey, how you doing? What's happening, JB? I don't give out the pool boy secrets. I'm waiting. I'm putting that book out there, you know? <laughs> that book's I got a book deal awesome. in the works. <laughs> and you were on fire last Saturday, absolutely on fire. I mean, you, uh, what, you were somewhere around 14 and 2. We're trying to figure it out before we went on uh, air here. Incredible night. You and Philly yeah. Godfather both. Yeah, it was a nice night, you know. Actually, one of the washes that I had, uh, Philly Godfather liked the other side. So if you just let those two wash each, uh, each other out, you had a really spectacular night. I yeah, mean, what uh, you had a was uh, you had picked him right on the Tuesday show and you changed your mind on the Saturday show. You talked yourself out of it. I sure did. Those preview shows are poison. I say it over and over again, you know. But it sucks picking up 12 positions in one night on a UFC card. So <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> Hey, was this rough. is the guy right here. We tell y'all every single week, he's the best sports better on God's green earth. He is fighting out of Philadelphia. He is Mr. Steve Maltepe. He's the Philly Godfather. Philly Godfather, how are you this week? Just wrapping up a great week. Uh, we kicked some more ass last night. NBA's on fire. And uh, I want to apologize to Joey for being on the other side of that winner. I'm sorry, Joey. That's all right. <laughs> You're not sorry. You've never been sorry. You kicking more asses than a donkey farm. You're damn right you are. <laughs> and speaking yeah. of asses, the next man. Just kidding. Co I go. I was a joke. That was a joke. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. You were on fire last week, Jonathan Coachman. You tell you said you said several weeks ago. Don't pick Bryce, Bryson DeChambeau. Yep. yep. He was a favorite in the tournament. He said the rough's too long. Jack Nicholas doesn't play that. Bryson DeChambeau was the guy not to pick. You said you wouldn't touch him with a 10-foot pole. You were right. The next week, yep. you said, don't go with Brooks Kupka, who was a favorite. You even made the audacious claim that he's not going to make the cut. He didn't make the cut. No, he did not. Week, what were you, Coach? Were you 1-0? and Were you 2-0? and Were you 3-1? and The numbers were so big that I won by last week, I had to write them down to make sure that I remembered. Our four bets that we put on this podcast last week, at the BMW Championship, I won by, wait for it, 26 shots, 14 shots, 10 shots, and it was kind of tight on Sunday with the last one. We just won by two. We were up by seven going into the final round, so we had a little bit to play with. So I wasn't even sweating going into Sunday. We just cashed the tickets one after another. The good thing about Coach on here is that I don't have to worry about putting him over in the introduction because he'll do it himself. <laughs> You're and welcome, you, Coach. You're I'll welcome. You. If I was 4-0, and oh, I'd brag about myself, too. <laughs> you do an awesome job at golf, and I'm really excited Thank about you. this. I've even broke out the old Dick Buckus jersey yeah. here because of this man from Chicago. He's on ESPN 1000. Host of the Odds Couple, Mr. Mike North. Mike, thank you very much for joining us. I've been looking forward to this. Philly Godfather speaks so highly of you. You're a great handicapper. You're a great radio host. And thank you for coming on Folly Action. Uh, it's about time I got asked, for God's sake. I've been at the bus stop waiting for you guys for the last <laughs> two months, for God's sake. No, it's great to be on with you. I'm coming off a big win. I won with John Rahm uh, the, the fourth day, $900 uh, dollars on 100 What I did is I picked four golfers. I picked... Uh, Dustin Johnson, Mazukama, I picked uh, Adam Scott and Rahm, and I said, you know what, I'll put a dime, uh, I mean, I'll put 100 on each, and what happened is, if Dustin Johnson wins, I win 175, so I got some money back, but I got lucky with Rahm with that putt, so I win a $900 deal just sitting around at home, laying on my ass on Sunday. <laughs> well, winning, winning in Chicago must be uh, contagious because you got you got your sports teams out there, your baseball clubs. Are, you have Chicago yeah. White Sox are leading St. Louis in their division. Chicago Cubs are winning their division. Uh, what's going on out there in Chicago? You guys, you guys have it all working the right way. 
Well, yeah, I'll tell you, I took the over in the Cubs, 32 at the beginning of the season. That's looking good. But I did take the under in the White Sox. I didn't think that they'd come out of the gate like this, but this seems to be the perfect scenario for them. You've got a 60-game season, young ball club. Uh, this has been, really been good because people are staying at home. The White Sox have been a stepsister in that town for so long. So I'm anxious to see once this whole pandemic stuff is over with, uh, what kind of attendance they're going to start getting on what has been a barren ballpark? Because this is one of the most exciting White Sox teams I've seen. I mean, you can go back to the 59 White Sox, the 2005 White Sox, the Frank Thomas teams, 93. But this team here, it's gotten loaded with studs. They just need a little more pitching. And you just wonder how much fun it would have been this summer here in Chicago with the two teams we got. Uh, Mike, I have, a qu I have a quick question for you because I've been sure, stealing coach. some money. I've been stealing some money on the team totals because I don't feel like Vegas has caught up to how good their offense has been. It's been right around four, four and a half almost every single game, and they've been scoring in double digits a lot. Uh, do you like that bet for the people at home? Because even we're recording this on Tuesday, the last three days I've won on the team total. I'll give you a perfect example, Coach. Last night I took the Twins at minus 150 and got a run and a half. I'm winning the ball game four to nothing. They weren't even phased. They weren't even phased. And then Minnesota, mm -hmm. Kepler drops the ball in right field in the ninth inning. And most veteran ball clubs might take advantage of it. But Lewis Roberts and, and these young guys, they said they made a mistake. Let's capitalize. And that's what happened. Mike, are the, uh, the Chicago White Sox are hitting a ton of balls out of the ballpark. I mean, they're just destroying right. the baseball. Can these guys last throughout the whole season? Yeah, for this season they can. And I think that, uh, you know, early they were feast or fam. Early, you know, they'd, go on a, uh, they'd hit for four days, uh, four games, and then they stop for three games. They're hitting every night now. Their pitching's getting better. Their bullpen's outstanding. Rick Renteria should be up for coach of the year, and yet people get the idea that if this team's ready to take the next step, he could be out like he was with the Cubs. I think he's earned the opportunity, the way this team's playing, to be the regular manager of this ball club. Nobody's really talking about it. Let's get through the games. But right now, I mean, this this team looks like it's wired. And, and, and really, Cleveland and Minnesota, Minnesota looks weaker. Cleveland let go of a lot of pitching. And uh, so I think the door's open for this team to do something early that nobody expected them to do because most people had them as third-place ball club. I want to ask you about Cleveland because that's the team, at least of this broadcast, when, when we're taping this, that they're up one game on right now. Right. Cleveland gets rid of Clevenger. Uh, main, right after that COVID, uh, you know, whatever it was that he, you know, right. he goes out for the night and he comes back, doesn't tell anybody, they're mad at him. Was this an overreaction by Cleveland or was this just a baseball trade? Was this something Cleveland's going to regret? Well, I don't, you know, how do you get rid of Trevor Bauer, Clevenger? You're getting rid of young arms. I mean, uh, yeah, I think it might have been an overreaction. Maybe there was some other nonsense they've been up to. You know, I mean, Clevenger is, is, looks like a free-spirited guy. Uh, but, but I mean, they, they don't tolerate any nonsense, I guess, over there. Because if you got rid of some of the arms they've gotten rid of over the last couple of years as a Cleveland Indian fan, you'd be going, you know, are we out here to win this thing? And then there was a stupid nonsense I heard yesterday that the that, – Cleveland might deal Clevenger to the White Sox, which was just absolutely insanity. You're not going to do that within your own division. It was just absolute. I mean, that's where rumor mongering gets stupid. But Clevenger, <laughs> you're going to San Diego. San Diego, they've been kind of a surprise oh. team. Of the year. And you, you got Tottis at third base. That could be an MVP this year. He's leading the league in three of the four major divisions. Nobody's ever led in all four in the history of baseball. Uh, you got Machado at shortstop. Does this put them in serious uh, contention to go to the big show? Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it, it's unbelievable. Last time uh, the Padres were relevant, I mean, Steve Garvey was playing for them. You know, Eric Shaw and, uh, you know, guys like that. Randy Jones. I mean, that's a long time ago. And uh, they look stacked. I mean, they really do. And they're going for it. You know, the White Sox didn't make any moves. Cubs didn't do too much. They picked up dice. They picked up some speed. The White Sox, the White Sox picked up some speed. But, you know, they, they sort of stood pat. And why not stand pat if you're playing that kind of ball? So, yeah, San Diego looks like a powerful team. I'll tell you another game I bet last week, and it didn't happen. But Houston and, and Oakland, that was an interesting series. I had money. I worked on it all day. And then they walked off. 
I go, where are you guys going? I got you pegged. <laughs> Speaking of walking off, uh, you know, the, the NFL is uh, walking on. They, they're going to looks like they're going to play this year. Looks like they're going to play on time. Looks like they're going to play all the games. Not sure how many fans are going to be in stadiums. You're going to have it some probably in some southern states that have uh, a little more looser restrictions on COVID. The Chicago Bears, uh, they've been just a quarterback short of, as Steve would say, he's like the Chicago Bears, the Philly Godfather for some time. Uh, they have mm -hmm. just been a quarterback short of getting the Super Bowl. The Bears this season, what do you think? Well, I was never a Trubisky fan, but I think it was an overreaction because I wanted Watson. Now, if Watson and Mahomes never pan out, or if they just become average quarterbacks, maybe the Trubisky thing could be tolerated. Last year, he had a bad year, but I would ask you this. The Chicago Bears have maybe had three or four good quarterbacks in 100 years. So we're not big on quarterbacks. You have the Butkus jersey on, and I appreciate that. Yeah, it was a thrill to not only grow up loving the guy, but now I'm friends with the guy. I mean, you know. And, 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 and you just look at the Bears. They're good at picking out linebackers, middle linebackers, and they're good at picking out running backs. But when it comes to quarterbacks, it just baffles me. Last year, he didn't have the year he had, but 17 of the 22 starters, including Mack and guys Jackson on defense, had down years. Uh, Trubisky has thrown in three years, guys, 49 touchdowns, 28 interceptions, 8,500 yards, 63%. From the field, an 85 quarterback rating, and he's 25 years old, and they bring in Nick Foles, who's had one year, 2013, and the last time I saw him, he threw three interceptions for 97 yards in his last game and was benched by a Don Johnson lookalike. So I'm just trying to figure out <laughs> if you end up, if you play Foles and you end up bringing him out and he falls on his face in game one, you screw two quarterbacks. Trubisky, it's not his team. And Foles, you just brought in from out of town. There's a pandemic going on. His wife just had a baby. Trubisky's been working out with the team for the whole damn summer, and he's minus 140, coach, to start. Trubisky, wow. 140. Wow. Wow. Might have to take a look at that, coach. <laughs> well, Foles came from uh, – So, this, so if, this, I, if this, I do that, though, you, so you don't want him to start. If I bet on him, then he won't start. <laughs> you want right. – we. Oh, uh, you're are you mushing right now? Philadelphia. So he benefited from uh, Nick Foles being there. He is the expert here on, on our show. Well, I football. love they look Nick Foles, I have nothing against him. But but you know what? He had a as Philly Godfather knows, I've he had a great offensive line there, great defensive line, fit into the system. But they seem to forget what happened in Jacksonville. He is one of the worst free agent signings in the history of the league. In the history, yes. yes. Four well, years, an eighty-eight line. million, and you we need can't an wait to bring him in. Yeah, you, you need an offensive line. Here. Here. You need an offensive line for Nick Foles, right? I mean, if you don't have an offensive line, he's not going to last. He's very fragile. You saw what happened in Jacksonville, but if you can protect him, he, mm -hmm. he can take defenses apart. And the Bears' offensive uh, coordinator this year, Abdul Lazer, is that his name? Uh, Mike, well, he's got it's Matt Nagy, really, but I, I know where you're going. <laughs> yeah, so he's got a relationship with Nick Foles. I think he was with Nicky Foles back in 13 when he had that 27-2 and season. Right. So if Trubisky starts out slow, you might see Nick Foles jump in here. I, don't, again, I agree with you, Coach. If he craps the bed in game one, you maybe bring Foles in. But do you start Foles and sit Trubisky, a 25-year-old, ruin his, ruin his confidence by taking the job away from him? Make them the scapegoat for last year when you know this as well as I do. Bear fans know this. Top to bottom, they all had miserable seasons. Yeah, and you, you can't be you can't bring him in because in all honesty, last year Mitch Trubisky owned the Detroit Lions. He had a, a 131 passer rating against that team. Uh he was on I mean, he that's the one quarterback that gave Detroit the, the Lions the biggest problem last year, even though they had problems against every quarterback and their defense was horrible and their defense efficiency right. matches were in the basement of of every category you can think of. But Trubisky probably – I mean, I'm sorry, Trubisky lit them up last year, and why would you sit him when, when, when he killed him last year? you got to start the kid. Uh, I think Nick Foles only helps Trubisky. He had a down year last year. There was, I think there were some nagging injuries that, that attributed <laughs> to that, and mm -hmm. I think this year he's going to surprise a lot of people, and he's going to come back a, a lot better quarterback, Mike. I hope you're right because, you know, the bottom line is I agree with you. He's been brought in – in case Trubisky really can't figure it out. And and he's got the pedigree. He's like Mariano Rivera to the Bears now. We did, although Chase Daniel did not play badly, you can't put him in the same 
I mean, the guy's a Super Bowl quarterback. I mean, I felt bad for Wentz. The guy walks into the Philly training camp every day, and there's a picture of Nick Foles with the Super there's Bowl. There's a statue. Game. There's a statue of Nick Foles. Judas. <laughs> Harris Judas with his name, planes, gliders, Foles. I mean, it's got to be rough. Hey, before we uh, let, let Mike go here, Philly Godfather, you're the football expert. Mike, you're the football expert. We're talking about the Chicago Bears. How do you think the Bears end up this season? I hate to put you both guys both on the spot, but you guys know your stuff, so I know that it doesn't phase you. Philly Godfather, if you want to go first, how do you think the Bears are going to do this season? I'll, I'll let Mike go first since uh, he's, you know, he's our guest tonight, John. Right, Mike, Thanks, Philly. I'll go. I, you know what? I want to say they're, they're right on the number eight, but I'll give them a nine. I'll give them a nine, but I just think that the two years ago, if you remember the year they had, if they get the same amount of turnovers, but if they were getting like three, four turnovers a game, and they were setting up on the short field, which is awfully tough to do. I'll go with the nine wins. Nine wins. And Philly Godfather, don't have to give us a win total, but maybe the projection is how you think they'll do as far as the season, as far as playoffs, potential Super Bowl, whatever you think. That division is so tough. You got the Packers and Aaron Rodgers. You got Minnesota, who got better. The Bears obviously got better as well. And you got Stafford coming back. That's probably one of the toughest divisions in football. Uh, eight wins is the correct number. If you know, as a gambling man, I'm not going to bet the over or the under because I think that number is right, right there, spot on. Yeah. Their defense was was even better than it looked last year. I think they were eighth overall in defensive efficiency. Mm -hmm. They were uh, number four in uh, points allowed per game. And now you add Robert Quinn to that defensive line. Woo. It's only going to help Mac out. This is a team. I tell people all the time: teams that get to the quarterback get to the playoffs. So if they can have another year where they get a ton of sacks and Mitch Trubisky doesn't turn the ball over, well, then the sky's the limit for the Chicago Bears team. It's all about the turnover differential and how good your defensive line is and, of course, how strong your offensive line is because it's related. If you've got a strong offensive line, more than likely your quarterback's going to throw less interceptions, you're going to win the turnover differential, and you're going to go deep in the playoffs. Mike North, uh, we appreciate you joining us. A few times when somebody says he, the guy is awesome, do you not only live up to that, you exceed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love you guys. You know that. I see the coach. I see you guys on TV. Money coming in from everywhere. It's unbelievable, baby. Billy's got cars, blue cars. He's got llamas running in the, in the front yard. He's got corrals. He's got horses. It's unbelievable. I Don't just get his herd of alpacas. The guy, huh? the guy's got a, he's got a herd of alpacas. <laughs> Who hasn't heard about Packers? Guard dogs. He's got guard towers. It's unbelievable. I love North, him. North, just do me a favor. My birthday's coming up in a couple of weeks. Please bring back the bookie priest. I'm Please. bringing him back for you. You do, hey, you do right by me. You know what I mean? And keep showing that beautiful state, buddy. I love the gates. He is Mr. Mike North. He is from ESPN 1000, the host of the Odds Couple. Mike, thank you very much for Thanks, joining. Thanks, guys. Take care of yourselves.